It's wholesome queer content. Now I have a thousand rats. I'm calling PETA. <laughs> oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? Silas is the real work of art. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Hi, I'm Silas, I'm 23, and these are my besties. I'm Mina, I'm 24. And I'm Jacob, I am also 24. And we're here to find Silas a bay. Absolutely. I've known Jacob for about six years. We met on Tumblr before like going into our college queer floor freshman year. And we've just been really tight ever since. They've known me way before I started transitioning or identified as queer or non-binary or anything. And so I feel like they have seen me, especially me dating at a lot of periods of my life. And I'm excited to See they choose. And Mina's one of my best friends that I've made since graduating college. And also just as another trans mask person, it'd be really nice to like have their influence in choosing my bae. A celebrity crushes for me would probably be like, unfortunately, uh, Shia LaBeouf. Fortunately, Jonathan Van Ness. <laughs> another celebrity crush is Kim Petras. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> also Rosalia. Absolutely. I think that Silas probably has a thing for Rosalia just based on how excited you were when you first showed me her music and she's obviously like adorable, very cute. One of the qualities I'm looking for in a bay is like a sense of style. It doesn't have to be good fashion, but just like, you know, this desire to like experiment with looks, whether you think it looks good or not, but just to like be a little freaky with it and having the confidence to do that is something I really look for. I also like look for some sense of humor or at least the ability to laugh at my jokes. They um, have to like, like to go out and have fun. Be able to and, like, hang. Yeah, be able to like go to like karaoke, and stuff, karaoke without getting too insecure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like be a little silly, right? Be a little silly. Mm -hmm. So if Jacob and Mina like don't pick the perfect bay for me, then jokes on them because they're gonna have to deal with me talking about all the other people with bleached hair and skateboards that I start dating. <laughs> well, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get Silas a bay. Let's go. Buckle up, sweeties. We're looking for love. Yeah. <laughs>
Just go there. Up top of the head, I don't want you to think about it. I still watch Gossip Girl almost every day, just as like a fun show to watch. <laughs> Love that. I used to steal all my brother's Pokemon cards in his collection, and I don't think he still knows yet. <laughs> so, hey, brother, if you're out there. Uh, yeah, and they're all like collector's item ones. Ooh. Yeah. So, when I'm broke, I know what I'm cashing. There we go. <laughs> I have a lot of secrets. <laughs> but my most innocent secret, I'll say, is that I have a fear of shower curtains. So ever since I saw this movie where there was somebody hiding out in this shower, every single time I go to the bathroom and there's a shower, I have to like open it before I use the toilet. That's real. Yeah, yeah. That would be a terrible way to go, so I respect that. Yeah. <laughs> my juicy secret is that last month I booked a last minute flight to go on vacation with my ex. Uh, <laughs> okay. We like a little mess. A secret of mine, I would say, is um, I made an impulsive move about two years ago. I got a tattoo on my back from the Spider-Man movie and it says you are who you choose to be. So my secret I have is pretty safe to tell because it came out a little bit to my brother after. It happened probably over 10 years ago. So his hamster died and me and my mom felt really bad because he had like just got it. So we went back to the store and got a new one and replaced it so he didn't know. And then yeah, so I think now he'll probably like, you know, the now secret went out and stuff, yeah, oh, so. That's like a good family secret too, so yeah. I like that layer, yeah. Whenever I watch a scary movie, I have to watch SpongeBob or Family Guy afterwards. My biggest secret is that we had to get rid of our dog last year when my brother was still five years old because um, he became allergic to him, but he still doesn't know. I think he might think that he might have gone to heaven. And you're all amazing. But Jackie, the only thing, like once you brought it a little up from gym to pull, I was more into it, but like as athletic in a health golf kind of way as Silas can be, I just don't know if they could keep pace with that kind of energy. But you're so cool. nice, I really like no you. Like we could be friends, but. <laughs> Bye Silas. Bye. <laughs> that was hard. I'm feeling a little confused, to be honest, because the reasoning that they gave me, I think it was about something, about like my being too athletic, because I mentioned that I did gymnastics. If that's the true reasoning though, and Silas isn't into that, that's, you know, it's for the best. I definitely wish that I had stuck the landing. What is your go-to karaoke song? I don't remember the artist, but what's the song like, don't you forget about oh. me? I think, I don't, know that I don't know. That's the one that came to like my head, but that could also be just because of like the Breakfast Club. Okay. Fair, <laughs> fair. Okay, this is actually really embarrassing. I have this like drag, not the persona herself because she is like a glam girl, but I have a persona named Crystal Tassels and she's really bad at lip syncing, like really bad at lyrics, but she does slam poems and she's there just to like shake her tassels. So, but I am someone who loves going to karaoke to like really hype, be the hype man. Mm. And I feel like I could be Silas's hype man. Yeah, I love that. So if we went to karaoke, I would definitely have to sing um, Baby It's You by JoJo because I'm having like a real 2000s pop moment right now. And like, that's just like hella romantic. I love it. Um, so yeah. Baby, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite um, artists I would do a karaoke to is probably um, Drake. And I would pick um, What's my name? I think that's how it goes with um, Rihanna as well. So um, I like that because I think it's just like a uppity pop kind of song. And um, I don't know, I think that's a that's something that'll get the mood going. And it'll, um, it's all innocent at the end of the day. you know. So I like that song for that. So if I had to sing a karaoke song, I definitely would pick Hit Me Baby One More Time by Britney Spears mm. because it does not require a high vocal range. Although, you know, you still gotta be a bit like performative with it and stuff, and it is a good song to set the mood. So, that's the one I'd pick. Oh baby, baby, how was I supposed to know? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it right here. Yes. <laughs> so there's a couple, uh, it's hard. So either Donna, Donna Summer, I Feel Love, Michael Jackson, Black and White or Bad, or Tina Turner, Proud Mary. They're all like fun songs and to get you in the mood and stuff. Big wheels <laughs> keep on burning. Proud Mary keeps me going. I think that. Oh, darn, I'm messing up the lyrics. All right, hey, we're going to stop there. You tried. But, yeah. That's huge. Well. 
I'm just gonna put a warning, okay? I know that Freddie Mercury would be rolling in his grave if he heard me sing Bohemian Rhapsody, but I still do it in the shower at least three times a week. And no, I will not give you a sneak peek <laughs> of what it looks like. Well, the number one bad answer is I don't do karaoke. Right. And I, that's just something, I mean, if you want to come like be my hype girl, it's something we could do, yeah. but you can come <laughs> be my hype dude. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah, they just have to like dabble with it. So I loved a lot of these responses. I got a lot of energy from a lot of you. However, I think Chastity, I wasn't getting the energy as much. And I know that Silas really needs that on those karaoke nights. No problem. All right. Bye, Silas. Bye. I do not feel disappointed in any way. I'm always going to have um, an open heart and mind and just accepting the fact that not I'm not everyone's choice. So that happens. So. We want to know, what is your sign, and how do you relate to it? Succinctly. Mm -hmm. We know there's a lot in there. You can go forever, trust me. I'm an Aquarius sun with like a Leo moon and a Leo rising, so I'm very like creative and like outgoing with like my style and how I present myself. I'm an Aquarius sun and a Scorpio moon. So I feel like all of us Bushwick gays are a little bit Scorpio moon though. But anyways, <laughs> with the Aquarius sun, there's this meme where it's like Aquariuses are just like aliens with like human masks. And I feel like that's it because I'm like quirky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Libra sun and I think that really relates to me because I'm just like a huge diva and will like do makeup with you and like we'll get our nails done and like other fun femme things like that. Um, and then also I'm like very justice oriented, so. So I'm a Taurus and I identify with that 100% because my number one quality, I see it on the mugs, I see it on everything that label Taurus is loyalty. And that is 100% with family, friends, bays. I will be 100% loyal and literally the phrase ride or die. Mm. That is me. <laughs> like, okay. I'm a cuss, so basically I'm kind of like three signs in one. I'm a Gemini Cancer, so we are a lot. And we're <laughs> one of the most hated signs other than Scorpio. Uh, but yeah, I'm creative, uh, attention span, hot and cold at, at moments. Uh, yeah, we're everywhere. For sure. <laughs> if there's anything I know about Virgos, we're perfectionists. We literally probably work harder than any other sign, like literally. We are all like just trying really hard to give it our all. And if we don't, we freak out and panic. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm an Aries. I really like other fire signs because they are direct. I really like earth signs mm -hmm. like Taurus. And uh, I unfortunately always like love like a really like emotional water sign like a Pisces or Cancer because I do have feelings. Okay. So Silas has big Aries energy meaning that their life exists in chaos and there's a lot of order in there and I battled with this a little bit because I feel like sometimes adding order is a good thing, but I also feel like sometimes if you hit chaos with order, it just doesn't mesh. So Gerard, I'm really, really sorry. It's just like as an Aries, I've never hit it off with a Virgo because of the perfectionist thing and I'm kind of imprinting on Silas. I think <laughs> to be fair though, I think that my dad's an Aries. So like, yeah, <laughs> so it's just, it's like a, it's an energy match thing. When they said that they're an Aries, I knew I was in for trouble. It's fine, it's whatever. Before I go home to my rats, time for therapy. I'll walk into the void alone. So, if you had all the options in the world, where would you take Silas on a first date? And what would the vibe of the date be? 
I think a great first date would be like going to a picnic or something. You can pack a little meal and drinks and just go and hang out at the park where it's like nice outside and sit and talk and just have a good time. So I really love cooking for people because that's a huge part of my love language is just like taking care of people sometimes and like there's the whole meme like I'm baby and I want to be able to be that for Silas for Silas can be baby. <laughs> so and afterwards I would take them to like mood ring or something that's like techno music because like hot girl summer I want to have hot non-binary summer where yes. we can go dress cute together wear like a cute harness and go out and actually like take care of each other then too. Take care of each other on the date. Yeah. So if I took Silas on a date, uh, first of all, it's a gay date, so it's got to last longer than two hours. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So then we're going to start in the late afternoon, and we're going to go to like the gay museum. Um, and then like I'll buy Silas like a latte or a matcha or like whatever Silas wants that day. Um, and then after that, we would go to like a figure drawing class. Like even if you're like not too good at drawing, like you can still hang. Um, and then like we would be drawing the model and then Silas would like look over and then I would be drawing Silas and not the model <laughs> because Silas is the real work of art. Oh wow. Whoa. <laughs> the <laughs> romance. <laughs> the planning. Okay, so I love to eat. So whatever first date I'm doing, it's definitely gonna be involving food. I would plan it sometime like during the afternoon, like where you eaten your where you haven't eaten lunch yet, but you really haven't eaten dinner that awkward time, because I feel like that's just the best time to eat. And I feel like that's where you really get to connect for a person. Cause for me, first dates really matter about connecting with the person and seeing like, you know, what you guys are like what's your pros and cons with each other, I guess, what your differences and similarities are, because that's a good way to start knowing, like, you know, your differences can bring you guys together, and the similarities just make it much funner. First date will be fun and chaotic at the same time, so we will take, like, a ferry boat ride, and then afterwards we will do, like, an escape room, and then after being scared for an hour, we will finally eat and, like, calm down. So. An ideal first date for me is like going to like a really low key play. It's like maybe like playing pool or like some type of game. I think it's like an Aries thing, where it's like if there's a game involved, like even if we just arm wrestle, I'm into it. Mm -hmm. um, I think these were all really good date ideas, um, but a lot of them had some really good chaotic energy in them, and I just felt like Amber's, yours didn't have like as much of an excitement factor. Although that date does sound really really nice, so I think we're gonna have to choose you. Okay. So thank you. All. Thank you. Yeah. I don't think it was like the wrong decision. I think everyone else's answers were better than mine. You're m missing out on my crazy style. It's never boring with me. So what would your most recent ex have to say about you? So my most recent ex and I are actually like on really good terms as friends. So they wouldn't really have anything bad to say about me besides like us both wanting to have each other have a good person that we're dating in our lives right now. And to be able to like have someone that we know that wants to support like all aspects of each other. It's wholesome queer ex content right now. So I think that my ex would be really good friends with Silas because we all are friends with each other in the scene sometimes. <laughs> so I'm also pretty good friends with my ex. Um, I think that they would say that I'm like very silly and sarcastic and that's like an entertaining part of me, but I can also be kind of like uh, strong worded in what I have to say and like very opinionated and like stand by what I believe in. So I recently went on vacation for like a week with my ex in Portland actually, just because we had never been there. Um, and so we saw the sights and bad things did not happen. <laughs> I've actually never been in a relationship, so I don't have an ex, but that's not because due to lack of experience. I just see the red flags right away and I don't want to put myself in a toxic situation if I know it could be avoided. So if I did have to say what they could say about me, I'm the best thing they never had. Okay. My ex and I are cool now. Um, before that, it was very rocky and not wholesome, what he said. Um, but yeah, I think my ex will say that I'm very caring and weird and crazy in a good way and very fun. Uh, yeah, I just make them like laugh a lot without being like, I'm not really like a comedian or anything, but I have like really 
I guess sarcastic in my jokes and stuff, so yeah. So for me, this one really came down to emotional vulnerability, and I think everybody did a good job of sharing that. But Danny, I love your answer and I identify with your answer, but it was very confident and a little cold, which keep that energy, it's amazing. I just think it might scare Silas a little bit. Okay, that's understandable. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Silas. Bye. 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 <laughs> Everyone has their own preference, so I genuinely feel like it was a sign that we just weren't meant to be. So I'm like chill with it. I would say Silas is missing out on someone very ambitious, loyal, and spontaneous. Okay, so we want to know, what are your biggest pet peeves? I don't know, I think just when people are like, just not genuine to other people. Like a biggest pet peeve of mine is when people come off like fake for like appearance. Just in general, you have to have like a filter up for when you're in social settings because some people like aren't really there for you but are there for themselves. And when, I, when it comes to dating, I'm there for the other person as equally as I am for myself. I think a pet peeve of mine is just when people really recklessly say negative comments about anyone of like any kind of non-normative embodiment. So like whether they're like saying something transphobic and it's just like clouded by their ignorance, like I just know like not to mess with that person um, unless I like have the energy to engage in conversation with them. For me, it's like someone who is just like very disrespectful for like no reason, who isn't like genuine. And also I have a thing about like scents and smells. So like the first time we're meeting, especially if you're coming from the house, it's like, I'm like very big on smell, so if you smell good, <laughs> if you stink, it's like, come on, like, you know what I mean, so, yeah. I don't have a lot of pet peeves, and I also tend to overlook a lot of red flags. Okay, so this was a hard one. You all gave really good answers, but we're kind of just going based on the vibes on this one. So Carter, I feel like, you and Silas definitely would get along, maybe more as friends. I love you. Bye. Bye. Okay. It's okay, I'm not too butthurt over it, Silas, because just because we can't be bays doesn't mean we can't be besties. I'm a little disappointed just because I bet Silas is a really sweet person and I'd want to be able to, like, be that for them. So, final question, why should we pick you for our bestie? I feel like Silas and I could really get along. Um, and something that I've done in past relationships is like grow with another person, like whether that be like talking about like your gender, like your sexuality, or just like your uh, goals in life. Um, so I feel like we could connect in that way. I'm like a fun, caring person and uh, mysterious at the same time, but a fun, mysterious. Um, yeah, like I'll make sure like they're like well if they're sick, like go out of my way. Like even though I had like a long day, I would still like make sure like they're okay and like making sure they're having like a great time and stuff. It, it's just like you never know what you're gonna get, I guess type of thing. Like the, I don't know what you call that, but it's just like it's a fun type of like situation. Like, So I don't want to give a reason for elimination. I want to give a reason that was what kind of split the hair on this one. I love your stability, Kai. I think it's really, really great. But one of the reasons we're here is that we want Silas to try new things. And so I just think that as like amazing and important as your answer was, it's not super new to them, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to say goodbye. All right, thank you. I said <laughs> They eliminated me because I was too stable. That's fine. I feel like stability is really good, but like, I can have fun too sometimes, so. <laughs> I loved 
the authenticity of Unique's answers. A lot of the answers were things I wouldn't have expected, but they still clicked in a way. So it's like that newness factor again. <laughs> unique had the most unique answers. So this is Silas. He's a really fun guy. If you ever need someone to go out with, Silas will be there. Bring the energy. I'm really happy that <laughs> my besties picked y'all. Watching all like the people go away was a little hard. So, like that person's cute, that person's cute. <laughs> I'm, like, but not able to like see everyone. Yeah. And then when I like saw you, I was like, okay, right. They made the right match. But every time I saw another person go by, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> good taste though, right? Yeah, it was a good group. They look groovy AF. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, cute. excited to There's like. There's more in store. Yeah, <laughs> like. Surf shopping already, <laughs> skateboarding, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I skateboard, hopefully you do too. I have too. a good feeling yeah. about this. Uh, but yeah. My besties picked my bae. There was definitely a moment where I def got eliminated in my head, because I was like, I'm a Gemini, so, <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, their final answer was my favorite, just in terms of like, why should pick them, and that like really stood out to me again as being unique. Um, I thought it was like a really unique answer and I just, yeah. I thought Mina and Jacob were really cool and like the height and stuff is like really cute too. It's like one to sit up here and another one, so it's cool. We really tried. That was rough, honestly. Everyone I, was cute and cool. Yeah. There was like this weird moment where I wanted to be like, how does everybody feel about swapping numbers just in case? Because <laughs> I'm sure any of these dates would go really well, yeah, but honestly. when it came down to like, we, I think we were really fair in picking just based on how they answered the question. That was like from the get-go what we were basing it on, yeah. so that was hard. I think Kai and Carter, who were there, like kind of till like the end, were major cuties that I hope to see around sometime. We, yeah, we really didn't know that we were set on Unique until the very end, I feel like. Yeah. Um, because they were all such good contenders um, with super specific responses, mm -hmm. but I think at the end we were just really listening to the responses and thought that what Unique said was going to be something different and good for Silas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. For more videos like this, subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel. Bye. <laughs>